gum or t using toothpaste. Um, these many studies have shown that it kills uh, anaerobic bacteria like Streptococcus coctus mutans that cause um, cavities and dental decay. Really? So, so here's my story. Like multiple studies in humans showing this. It's like a big deal. So I went to this is before I was before I had my son. Um, I went to the dentist. My dentist is a really he's great, and he did an X-ray. We were doing a cleaning, you know, dental hygiene thing, and and he comes back and he's like, "You've got two cavities." And I was like, "How the hell do I have cavities? I don't need sugar." Like. You know, I've just, I've got like a bad oral microbiome or something that I've just, for, for, for years, or I don't know. Mm. I shouldn't have cavities because I don't eat sugar. But anyways, I had, so he goes, you have two cavities. They're at the point of no return where, you know, like you, they're, I guess they penetrate the enamel a certain amount and they're like, you have to, you have to like get them out. And so the way I am is I always like to like look into everything before I do anything. It's like, okay, this is not my field. I understand. I told him, I'm like, I'm going to do some reading research and see if I can find, you know, if there's any, you know, possibility that I don't have to, like, get a filling, right? And he's like, okay, well, if you find anything, please send it my way. So um, so then I found out I was pregnant. And I was, so I was like, okay, well, I can't go back to the dentist. And at that point, chew xylitol gum. By the way, the studies were with gum, not the toothpaste. The ch people were chewing this gum. And pregnant, pregnant women, like if they were like six months pregnant, the study started at six months, and they chewed this xylitol gum all the way up until anywhere between the child, you know, the baby being six months. And there were some studies that went out like a year. Um, and then they met the, the, the researchers measured um, the oral bacteria of the toddlers, and then they measured them multiple years out while, as they became children. And the mothers chewing it, uh, chewing the gum, it, it lowered the incidence of the um, S mutants in the children because, you know, mothers kiss their mm -hmm. kids and you transfer yeah. oral bacteria. And so they're like, they're chewing the xylitol gum had a positive effect on the child's oral microbiome. And I was like, fuck yeah, I'm going to do this. So I was like, I gave myself TMJ. Like I chewed so much xylitol gum while I was pregnant. And like I still like to this day I chew. I have some with me right now. But TMJ is. Uh, what, is it, am I saying it, the right thing? Yeah. Like, Mandalor, like my, it was like popping. Yeah. My jaw was. I was eating yeah. a lot of sautéed kale and chewing a lot of xylitol gum when I was pregnant. Wow. And so, uh, but it totally fixed itself, thankfully. So, anyways, a year goes by. I have I have my son. Eventually, I'm like, okay, I got to go back to the dentist because you know pregnancy makes your teeth worse. There's like all this stuff about you you're bleeding, your gums bleed. There's like there's some kind of term where like women get like like what's that periodontitis or gingivitis mm -hmm. one of those two it's bad anyways so i go back to dennis we do the x-rays and i'm like oh he's gonna tell me about the stupid cavities and i haven't done the research <laughs> you right. know <clears throat> and he goes he comes in and he goes i've never seen this before but your cavities are gone and he shows the x-rays and he shows me before and after he's like they're totally gone and and i was like that's amazing i was like is it the pregnancy is did and he's like no he's like we get women coming in here after, and it's like worse. And I said, the only thing that I did, that I could think of is like my obsessive xylitol gum chewing, which I still do. Probably can't read the back, the ingredients, but it has xylitol. And this is Trident gum. Now, looking at Walmart, which is you know, the most variety we have here in stores around here. I read the back of every single gum. And this is the one I chose because most of them also have the um, aspartame. So it's kind of hard to find gums that don't have that now. I'll leave a link. Um, I think Joe Rogan mentioned like Neuro gum. Of course, you can find better ones online. And they may not have much Xylitol, so I'd say the best thing you can do for Xylitol is to actually just buy, buy it. The Amish people sell it around here. So it is about eight forty nine a pound. Not cheap sweetener, but it's, you know, it's a natural sweetener. And I actually started using this when I went keto. Also, like this one, this is uh, erythritol and stevia. But xylitol. Now, if you use too much of this, and it's like, it's a natural sweetener, like I said, uh, birch tree, I think there are other fruits and uh, 
plants that produce it or they can make it from it um it's really sweet but in your digestive system I think it uh, goes a lot slower so it'll make you have like diarrhea things like that you don't want to eat too much of it you can make mouthwash uh, you can add it into your like your toothpaste if you make homemade toothpaste like baking soda coconut oil maybe like a spearmint peppermint um, eucalyptus essential oil and then this stuff and Essentially, what it does is it promotes the good bacteria. The, you know, it gets rid of the staphylococcus mutants, whatever, the anaerobic uh, bacteria, you know, the kind that thrive off of lacking oxygen. Basically, like everything else, like your gut, you need a, a good microbiome in your mouth to have healthy teeth. Of course, this is just part of it. Everything, every system, you know, there's so many factors in these systems. So this is just part of it. And, of course, the modern medical system. They only recognize the bacteria aspect. So there's so much to it why people get cavities. We don't even understand fully, you know, the mechanisms. I remember a few years ago when I started looking into this, I was telling my mother-in-law, because my husband gets cavities and I've never gotten one but I was telling her you know you can heal them it's something there's like a system inside with the you know nutrients and everything just works in a way and the nerves you know your teeth are alive they're bringing these nutrients somehow to your teeth and she she thought I was crazy she was like no no way because you know modern dentistry that's what they believe that we have these teeth they're there from the time we're babies and there's nothing you can do you can just clean them and keep them clean and bacteria will cause cavities and nothing else contributes to it you can't heal it all you can do is feel the cavities and you know get dental work when there's a problem and now I think it's becoming more and more ridiculous to deny the fact that people are healing cavities it's happening you know so there's something going on on the inside of our bodies, you know, and uh, C. Siren Janine actually is talking about this right now. She's reading a book about healing cavities and healing your teeth. So uh, she'll go more into detail on like the nutrients and things like that if you're interested. By the way, I'm filming in my car just because it's it's a spot where I know I can get a little bit of quiet time and peace. So yeah, just in case you're wondering. So, like I said, I've never gotten cavities. Uh, I probably shouldn't speak too soon on that because um, it's been a couple years since I've been to the dentist. But I've also never had, like, been able to get my teeth very white for whatever reason. I don't know. I've tried to whiten them, use, like, products over the counter and things like that in the past, and I've never been successful at it. Um, maybe there's... Like there's a connection there I don't know but my mom always contributed to the fact that I've always loved milk always to this day I love milk and yeah like I said there's like a um there's a system and I feel like I've always had a good microbiome in my mouth because I will tell you and this is probably kind of disgusting but um for years I you know I would go to sleep at night without brushing my teeth <laughs> And you're supposed to brush your teeth like two, three times a day. But I would brush my teeth in the morning. And I would just fall asleep at night like as a teenager and stuff. And in my early 20s. Probably throughout my 20s. <laughs> and um, never got a cavity. Never. When I went keto, after like several months of not eating fruit. And funny enough, Janine was just talking about vitamin C and teeth health today. I started noticing there was like something different going on in my mouth and uh, when I would eat fruit I don't know if it was like the ketosis or whatever it felt like there was some sort of chemical reaction or like within like the microbiome like I could feel it like it wasn't used to that fructose and so I started thinking 
I was developing cavities or something, but I've never had any pain. I've never had any sort of problems like that. So uh, I started eating fruit again and things feel normal again. It's like, yeah, I think it's all like part of a microbiome and then uh, a nutrient synergy, you know, thing going on. And the xylitol aspect, the xylitol is so interesting to me. Because, um, yeah, like I said, the better thing to do, I'll leave links for, like, the mouthwash and how to make the toothpaste and whatnot. But this is interesting because it promotes, you know, I didn't know this until, like, a couple weeks ago, I think, I saw that uh, Rhonda Patrick talking about it. And I was like, how did I not know this? How are dentists not all talking about this? I guess some do. But, um, yeah, it's a really fine, fine sugar. And it will also sweeten your toothpaste. That's another great thing. So if you want to, like, make toothpaste for your kids. You know, people use, like, stevia to sweeten toothpaste. Why not just use this? So. I want to go over um, some of the studies. Maybe just, like, one. Because basically the, the whole idea... It's pretty easy to understand, you know, it just promotes the, it helps get rid of the bad bacteria and it promotes the good bacteria in your mouth. So that's a huge part in cavities, of course. And like I said, uh, you know, if you want to go into like the nutrient side of this, because we all know vitamin A, vitamin D, vitamin K2, there are nutrients that are extremely important in your teeth health. We see children who are um, not getting these nutrients, they get bad teeth faster, adults as well, but I'm saying like, it's not normal. You know, you see so many kids nowadays, they're getting cavities and their teeth are rotting and it's, how is that normal? Like you're just starting out in life, you're just starting to eat. And if you want to blame it on, I've heard uh, dentists and pediatricians blame it on uh, milk rot, they call it, things like that. My um, toddler still nurses at night, you know, like, this isn't normal, so there's something else going on, something lacking, something upsetting the balance, you know, so, yeah, health is a full package, so, um, like I said, I'll leave some links uh, to recipes on the mouthwash, and this is the gum I'm using right now, I bought a ton of this. There are probably better options. Get you some. So basically this is already getting too long. What I'm going to do is just leave the study up and you can pause and read anywhere you want to. And I'll link it as well. But it's basically just going over xylitol and how it's a five carbon sugar and it has been studied for at least 40 years. It's been known for a century. So, I'll read some of it. So, the recommended dose for dental caries prevention is 6 to 10 grams per day. For those with difficulty chewing, you can use candy. And like I said, you can also use mouthwash and put it in your toothpaste. And high doses do cause diarrhea. And what it does is it reduces the levels of mutant streptokai. I think that's how you say it. And plaque and saliva by disrupting their energy production processes leading to futile energy cycle and cell death. It reduces the adhesion of these microorganisms to the teeth surface and also reduces their acid production potential. Xylitol, like any other sweetener, promotes mineralization by increasing the salivary flow when used as chewing gum. The uniqueness of xylitol is that it's practically non-fermentable by oral bacteria. Also, there is a decrease in the levels of MS as well as the amount of plaque when there's habitual use. So, the strep transport the sugar into the cell in an energy consuming cycle that is responsible for the growth inhibition. And so it explains this whole cycle and it results in this development of intracellular um, degradation. So it's basically, it results in this whole cycle of death and it starves the S-mutants. 
And that's not the only thing. It's been shown to impact the growth of nasal pharyngeal bacteria, such as S. pneumonia and S. mitis. So these are, you know, bacteria that supposedly play a role in nasal pharyngeal pneumonia. Xylitol decreases the incidence of dental caries by increasing salivary flow and pH 13 and reducing the number of cariogenic and periodontopathic plaque levels. Okay, so, yeah, like I said, I don't want to read this whole thing. Um, you get the idea. It promotes healthy bacteria growth and demotes the, you know, anaerobic bacteria, basically. This study at the end, it actually talks about how they have witnessed in laboratory settings and in other studies uh, the reversal of these cavities and the remineralization of people's teeth so if there are dentists or people in general who deny that this can be done maybe they just don't realize this is actually being done this is documented and you can refer them to some studies um, they also mention chlorexidine as being used in a combination with the Zoltol and it having like a boosting effect with uh, people who have severe you know cavities and then they also looked at Manuka honey, and that works pretty well as well. It even mentions here that it helps boost the gut floor. So as you can imagine, if it helps with your mouth microbiome, it would help elsewhere. Um, I'm going to leave this all here, and yeah, I think what I'll be doing, I'll replace the stevia I used before. I'll replace that with my Zillatol now. And I'll also be using raw honey, so that will be <laughs> my two sweeteners, my two go-to sweeteners now. And, of course, the Zolotol if you want something low, no calorie. And raw honey is, you know, good on its own in other ways. So, y'all have a good day.